There is a raging debate in the Nigeria social media space about mental health and spirituality. The conversations uh, were sparked by a statement from popular Nollywood actress Genevieve Naji when she stated that mental illnesses are more spiritual than physical. And this belief has been often been portrayed in Nigerian movies where mental health patients are taken to religious houses rather than psychiatric hospitals. So does religion and spirituality have a role to play in mental illnesses? And if yes, what roles are those? With me in the studio to answer these questions and shed more light on the uh, matter is Shion Dosumu. He is a mental health advocate and founder and executive director across all initiatives for mental health and stigma eradication. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you for having me. It's good to see you. Right, um, also in the studio is mental health consultant and CEO, my care buddy, Eberi Okonkwo. It's good to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Right. So let me start with you, um, Shegu, uh, Sheon Dosmo. Um, well, I said in the intro, what the Nollywood actress, Genevieve Naji, when she stated that mental illnesses are more spiritual than physical, how they react to that? Uh, so w when I heard the when I heard that statement, it was it was a bit mind blowing, and and, and I, th I thought it was also you know from a per a, a perspective. Um, unfortunately, that that that's the kind of information that we hear. Mm -hmm. People speak from what they know, and a lot. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand mental illness for what it is. So it's assumed that you know it's always a spiritual attack mm -hmm. uh, i'm glad that over the years there have been conversations around enlightenment on what because uh, for instance post-traumatic stress disorder chronic depression people are beginning to have real conversations with mm -hmm. this and it's happening in churches even in religious gatherings mm -hmm. so we need i feel that she spoke from what uh, you know the the pot of knowledge <laughs> that she has <laughs> Being an actress, yes. right? So this is something that um, we often have different opinion or different meaning. We have these different meanings to to it, especially in this part of the world, Africa generally. So how did you receive the news when you saw an actress, Genevieve Nanji, saying that it's more, you know, spiritual than mental uh, than physical? Okay, so it's not completely um, new, given the environment we find ourselves in. Uh, being Africans, we live in a very superstitious world, mm. or should I say religious world, like very religious world. Um, to be honest, there is um, a similarity between uh, mental health mm. issues and spirituality. But the problem comes when there is so much focus on spiritual matters, because in this part of the world, uh, there isn't anything in this life that we wouldn't find a way to apportion the blame right. to spirit beings, to demons. So there is this um, mentality that anything, any mental health issues, any mental health challenges has to, ha has to have something to do with village people, has mm. to have something to do with demons, has to have something to do with casting out demons, going to deliverance houses and having brooms yeah. beaten on such mm -hmm. people. And mm -hmm. it's so sad because uh, these things actually encourage slavery and even more uh, negative consequences that mm -hmm. people tend to face as a result of the mental health challenges that they experience. Right. Uh, Cheryl, um, how do we know if we're having good mental health, we're in good state when it comes to mental health? How do we recognize that? Okay, so it's not really far-fetched, especially when you have a d deep understanding about your physical well-being, your emotional well-being, mm -hmm. and then um, maybe social well-being, how you interact <coughs> with the society. When you see that, you know, you don't, ideally you're the outgoing person, and all of a sudden you don't feel excited about going out or even driving conversations yeah. with people, then you can begin to say you're not in a great uh, mental health. For for some people, it's f more physical. You feel extremely tired, mm -hmm. you know, from doing almost nothing. It's just a thing of the mind. You're mentally stressed. Mm -hmm. f you could be physically stressed from moving from one spot to the other, or probably driving. You know, this these are signs. These are signs. And then um, I talked about social, physical, and then mental. Uh, some people, you know, 
unemotional. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times you deal with people and you get backlash, you fail at things, you, yeah. you know, having given your best, you don't excel at it. That obviously you're gonna have mixed feelings about, you know, being termed a failure um, or a failed marriage, you know, you don't, nobody wants to bear that mm -hmm. divorcee, divorced, yeah. you know, it's not a good thing. But um, these are some of the, you know, signs that you can use to know if you're in a great uh, yeah. mental health state. Right, um, uh, Iberi, talk to us about your experience, your experiences, you know, especially that which struck much of your attention, dealing with this kind of, you know, situations when you get to meet some patients or people who are having mental health issues. Okay, first, um, let me uh, do a disclaimer. I'm not exactly a mental health expert. Right. I am an enthusiast right. that owns an organization that has experts yeah. doing this job. So while I'm an enthusiast, I'm an advocate for mental health, I do not want to come off as an expert. So mm -hmm. having said that, of course we come across different people dealing with different levels of different mental health um, states and challenges. One of the key things that strikes us every time is the, is the stigma. Right. And now stigma is just not external, it can also be internal. Sometimes we are, we are stigmatizing ourselves. Like you are going through things, you know you would feel better if you express it, if you share it with somebody, but you just cannot bring yourself to that point of opening up. We've experienced some cases of people who, okay, They've had, oh, you should talk to a mental health specialist, talk to a mental health expert, you'll be better, go for therapy. And they're actually willing, they've gotten to that point of exposure, of understanding that, okay, this is actually necessary. But then at that very spot, you find them beginning to close up, like it's a struggle, it's a constant battle for people to really get to that place where they are willing to fully express themselves. And this is actually what I think a lot of organizations and bodies are trying to really break for people to get to a point that just the same way you can feel headache or feel like a pain in your back and you go see a doctor and i don't think there's anybody who gets ashamed right. at telling the doctor that oh i have this pain in my back what do i do i think that's the point we all need to get to that oh i'm feeling this particular way um not my my usual self and be comfortable like that is the point i think Right, uh, right. Uh, just like we actually started, uh, spirituality and mental health. You know, we, we just, w when we talk about spirituality, we've got different um, opinions about it. It means to, to us in different ways. Those who are in monotheistic religion talk about Christian, Islam, Judaism, and those who do not even believe in the existence of the Almighty. So what is that correlation between these two? Do they affect one another? Do they work together or do they work against each other? <clears throat> okay, so I, 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 before I, you know, tell a, use a story that, of someone who shared that experience, mm -hmm. I feel wh while I was coming here, I just thought about it. Like you know, spirituality is is is, is broad, and if you're speaking to me on you know about spirituality, it, you're, it depends on the depth, how deep you are in this. You might be twenty years, you might have twenty years experience, yeah. and I'm just six months into what you're, you know, teaching me about. I might, you might have experienced miracles, huge ones, and I'm just new into this, and I don't even understand what it is, and it's a struggle for me. So it's, it's, it, the, levels, the levels differ, mm -hmm. and most times I see that, you know, the people leading, you know, uh, spiritual conversations mm -hmm. are probably more knowledgeable than their audience, and that creates like a knowledge gap, and even widens this whole lack of understanding of what mental illness is and what it should be. Um, on Instagram, I was, there's, there's, a, there's an emotional therapist I follow, and she shared a story of, you know, how a lady who lost, you know, like close relatives, two of them, after praying, fasting, mm -hmm. you know, tightening and all of that, mm -hmm. eventually they passed on. Now, how do you explain to such a person that, you know, <laughs> God exists. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty difficult. But you have to understand that this person is grieving. So how do you respond to that? Sometimes even the 
you know, the, the religious leaders don't have this understanding of how to um, engage even church members or, you know, um, not religious people, let me just put it that way, don't have this understanding of how to intervene, how to provide support. So it creates more problems. Mm -hmm. And then we end up saying it's a spiritual problem. Yeah. I, have, I, have, I know people who have lived with schizophrenia, mm. people who are bipolar, and yet they live a meaningful life. <laughs> it's yeah. just about managing you know, the mental illness. Yeah. So, so how do we reconcile these two, you know, these two who are usually at variance you know, with each other, each other mm -hmm. spirituality, mental health? How do we reconcile them? Uh, one of the ways out, you know, is just continuous enlightenment. We need to bridge the knowledge gap. The, the truth is that there's a wide gap. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't even know what, when we talk about, there are people who live with anxiety right. in this community. There are people who live with post-traumatic stress disorder. Last week I was on a radio conversation and we we're talking about the, the train attack. Now, some of these pas passengers would never forget that experience. They will never, in shocking, you know, the shocking part was that no one is having a conversation around the mental health of these passengers. They would never, mm -hmm. some of them, every time they, you know, find themselves in trains, they are thinking about, they are playing back that experience. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's for one individual who will go back home to his or her relatives and then have to deal with, for some, they lost their son or lost their daughter. How are they going to respond? So it's, it's broader than what we see. But unfortunately, I, I feel that, first of all, when we address the knowledge gap, because you need to, if you don't understand what mental illness is, you are going to react differently. Right. If you don't abuse the individual or make mockery or crack jokes, yeah. you know, you're going to mess the whole thing up even if you have the chance to correct things. So I feel it's so important to keep addressing the knowledge gap. And for us, for my organization, I think we're focused on you know, having those basic conversations. Mm -hmm. Understand it, uh, postpartum depression, it is real. Mm -hmm. You can have a child and don't feel like, you know, hugging the child. It's not a cause. <laughs> you need to understand that people might experience that so what would you do in such a situation? Mm -hmm. It's not, ah, 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 I said it, that my sister, she's not always happy mm -hmm. when we are thriving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not the conversation. You should understand that these mental illnesses exist and then find a way to right. address it. <coughs> well, Iberi, um, we know that uh, the current situation in the country, it's not really you know, fun as we probably want it to be. How do you explain to somebody who, who has got no money in the pocket, <laughs> who has got no food in the morning to eat, hmm. in the night, really doesn't know how to even go about it? The following day or the future, it's looking so bleak. And you want to tell this person about mental health. It does, it, it, it does appear that the current reality doesn't care about our it mental well-being. It doesn't care about it. Okay, why I'm, I'm sorry, why this, I'm finding this a little bit funny is because these are actually practical things mm. we experience on a daily basis, especially um, being in the line of uh, sector, mental health sector that we are, because at every instance when you want to resume conversations about mental health and why you should be very particular about that, you hear more than half people say that see forget it what is doing me is money just yeah. give me money and i'm all right <laughs> I'm, I'm and okay. you know you, you you are stuck at that point because to be honest they really the economy is not encouraging yeah because and they are sorry to bought in they said money is the root of every evil money is the root so, of and every that evil. also said as money could be the root of mental health does it make mm, sense not necessarily because right. looking at it from another angle um when you talk about um statistics on suicide mm. depression we have a good number of people that, by the world standards, by societal standards, are rich, mm. are wealthy. But then they went through high levels of depression. Some of them actually went as far as committing suicide. Mm. So these are actually, just like he said, it's a matter of having 
enough knowledge and understanding about these things that we are talking about. It is not always about physical things. And that's one thing about life. Um, we, as human beings, we are actually very insatiable. Uh, for instance, you meet, I'm just giving an example, you meet a young gra graduate uh, who is, of course, thrown into the Nigerian labor market where there is no job. And the person is all worked up. The person is all anxious. And if you meet such a person, he or she might be very, very quick to tell you, see, I'm OK, I'm fine. If you give me a job, I'm all right. But then check back. Two or one year later, the person is already working. Mm -hmm. Is the person OK mentally? Not exactly. There must be another thing that such a person is looking forward to attaining, and that might be taking a toll on such a person's mental health. If not properly, man uh, properly managed, if not properly, um, if you don't use measures yeah. and available resources to make sure that you are in a very good uh, mental health. So these things are real. It's not always about, of course, money helps a lot. Money makes it easy to, to have good mental health, <laughs> I must say. But at the end of the day, we need to understand that it's not all about money. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the availability of that money could actually even be a source of concern. Mm -hmm. It could be actually what is giving you anxiety mm -hmm. because when you're trying to understand how to manage this money, how to make this money produce other money, mm -hmm. other sources of mm -hmm. income, mm -hmm. how to apportion this. By the time you, okay, you are wealthy, you people know you actually have access to these right. resources. You begin to have people that are placing so much pressure on you and that becomes a problem. Sometimes mm -hmm. you end up thinking, I wish I don't even have access to all. It might sound weird, but it's really, it's, it's real. Like I don't have this access to all this money. So I can have my peace of mind. People are not bugging me. Nobody even cares about how I really feel. All they, when they see me, what they see is, and access to money. So wow. these things are really, really uh, broad well, and di wide. Different strokes for different folks, they yes. say. But um, sometimes you want to consult a doctor, you want to talk to your doctor because mm -hmm. of the way you're feeling. You're not sure exactly what is wrong with you. But then you're not torn between your spiritual leader who is saying, no, you've got to stay somewhere, fast for so many days and pray so that you topple you know, some of these challenges. So at what point should you get to see the doctor I, I i feel you know again we need to begin to understand you know one is the knowledge gap because if you if you begin to feel strange mm -hmm. about you know um let's cite the case of um the train accident or yeah. attack people you don't expect these individuals to get back to the society and behave like every other person yeah. They are ever going to be disturbed about movement. Who is coming around? Why does this place look like? Yeah. Why does the and they for for such individuals they probably need to talk more about the experience. Yeah. See, you know, experts who would you know guide them through sharing those experiences and not trivializing their case. Sadly, that's what we you know find around people trivial i was there now get over it get over yeah. it get back to work get back to work and that's that's not always the way out we just need people who would understand that you know first this this is how i feel the individual knows best <laughs> you know how you feel about a certain situation oh you just gave birth and you don't feel like and every you don't feel like every month, every new, you know, mom out there, you, you feel really weird. <laughs> then you, you can co seek for help. Like, I have a new baby. I'm not excited about it like every other person is. Oh, I lost my, my mom. I don't feel like talking to anybody. Mm -hmm. And then if you find, if you have people who understand these things and don't see it like it's strange, because the truth is some people lose close relatives and don't feel like, you know, accepting, allowing people to come visit. Yeah. They don't feel like talking to anybody. But the culture will tell you that it's the right thing to do. Mm. When you lose it, people come around, mourn with you, but you don't want that. Do you understand? It, it feels absurd, but that's, that's your reality at that time. Yeah. So you might just seek, you know, a professional help by asking, I feel this way, is it strange? And then your therapist who understands will not say that it is strange. He or she will ask you, why do you feel this way? Right. What can we do about it? What is the best? And then you Absolutely. find a solution. Absolutely. Your final thought on this and what you would like people to take home from, you know, 
what's your, your advocacy this morning? Okay. Who's the enthusiasm? Thank you so much. Um, coming from um, the theme for today's show, which is, I think, the relationship between mental health and religion, yeah, spirituality. Um, spirituality. Yeah. In as much as, yes, we are trying to let people understand that um, it's not always going to be about religion, it's yeah. not always spiritual, it's not uh, always demons. Yeah. Please um, ensure that you imbibe the culture of meeting qualified therapist and a consultant. Yeah. We also need to be very sincere with ourselves yeah. and understand that man is a religious being. Yeah. And apart from man, going deeper, the African man is a very religious, being. religious being. You can take religion away. From, even if you say, oh, I'm not a Christian, I don't go to church. There must be something, some yeah. supernatural that you really key into. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is um, we should not be all about um, excusing the spiritual from yeah. men because they are actually very related. very related. They are very related. The man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. And body. Yes. So um, the problem actually comes when there is an unhealthy um, authority in, in seconds, okay, placed um, in the hands of spiritual yeah. Fathers, yeah. because some, sometimes there's there's this thin line between psychology and mm. and spirituality. Yeah. So mm. spiritual fathers should understand that okay, this is as much as I can contribute Absolutely. to the well-being of this Absolutely. person, while the uh, therapist no. can actually come in Makes sense. in this way. Yes. Makes sense. Thank <laughs> you very kindly, um, mental health consultant CEO, my care body, Iberi Okonkwo. Thank you so much. Thank really you so much it. for having and me. And also a mental health advocate, founder and executive director across all initiative for mental health and stigma eradication, Shea Ondosumo. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for having me.